forward to next week. And uh, um, so we thought we'd talk about what you do on Thanksgiving. I also want to talk about two really hot topics in the trucking industry uh, currently. So we'll do that after we talk about gobble gobble day. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so I always start the show off uh, talking about your background, you know, how you got into the trucking industry. And uh, you're kind of unique um, because you're kind of young, right? Yep. You're only 36. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So how did you, let's, how about where did you, where were you born? Um, in Michigan, Metro Detroit. Metro Detroit. Yep. All right. And did you grow up in Detroit? Um, suburbs of Detroit. Okay. Yep. And just, I didn't hang out in Detroit too much, just around the suburbs. And yeah, that's where my family's from. Okay. So you graduated from high school in Detroit? Um, yep. Yeah. And then what'd you do after high school? Um, bounced around, factory jobs. Everybody said, hey, you know, got to make money, got to make money. And factory wasn't working out. I had an uncle. He was in trucking, drove from Mayflower. He would come up and just doing different things than everybody else. And I'm like, I want to do that. <laughs> just really? Financially wise. Okay. And, um, I started inquiring, asking questions, because I'm like, this can't be it. Working in a factory, same thing over and over again. This can't be life. <laughs> wow. So then you talked to him. Did you go for a ride? I mean. Um, yeah, I actually went one time. To, with, he, wrote, we, he came up. We actually helped him unload his truck, me and a couple of my cousins. And uh, he was just telling us a little bit about it. And this was when I was young, like teenager. Okay. And uh, it just kind of stuck in the back of my mind. And I'm like, man, like this, this is it. Like, how do I do this? <laughs> wow, no kidding. So then did you go to truck driving school? I did. Where'd you go? I went to a school called New Way up in Pontiac, Michigan. Okay. And um, how old were you? I was like, it was back in 2008 I graduated from there. Okay. So I'm 36, I'm horrible at math. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, uh, I think that uh, you were born in 85, which I remember that because that's the year I graduated from college, believe it or not. Oh, my God. So, 85 to 2008, you must have been 23. Yeah. And Did they even let people drive trucks at age 23? Um, 21, you can't drive. You have to be 21 over to drive interstate. Okay. Yep. But... um. I didn't know nothing about trucking. I just knew my uncle did it, and I can't do this life that everybody else is doing. Because the thing was, get a job at in, in one of the big three, Ford Motor Company, GM, and or Chrysler, and okay. retire from there. And I'm like, I can't do that. <laughs> wow. I can't do the line work and just the same thing every day. Okay. So you go to this truck driving school, and it was what four weeks, five weeks? Um, four weeks. I think I did it uh about a month and a half. So it was about six weeks. It was the dead of winter. Okay. I had no clue what I was doing. Okay. And I said, uh, let's go for it. What do I gotta lose? <laughs> <laughs> so, so did you like it? As soon as you got into a truck, you liked it? Um, at first I didn't. Okay. I was like, what am I doing? <laughs> yeah. I said. I don't know what this is for me. Like just not knowing nothing about synchronized transmissions or anything, just feeling overwhelmed. And I'm like, I'm, I'm in it already. So I'm gonna keep on going. Because I didn't go to like um, a company that where you, they'll do the training for free. I had to get it um, financed. And I was, so I was locked in. I'm like, it's wow. all or nothing. <laughs> because I didn't know nothing yeah. back then. I really, I didn't do a whole lot of research, but I was, it was just like, here's the bridge, let's jump. <laughs> yeah. That's strange though, Montez, because knowing you, you ask a thousand questions all the time. You know? Now I do. Yeah, yes. You do. Then I didn't, but now I have to be more calculated because the kids and yeah. the wife. <laughs> So were you married then? Because you met in high school, right? Um, yeah, we weren't married. We were okay. dating. Yeah. And um, I had my daughter. Well, yeah, I had my daughter in June of 2008. Okay. And I was, like I said, I was working some factory job. I'm like, this something got to give. And I heard there was great money, and I just knew I couldn't do a factory job. I did it, and it was literally like hell. 
<laughs> I was like, so which factory was it? It was a factory in Mount Clemens, Michigan. Okay. That everybody goes to when they graduate. Okay. And it was it was a heat treating factory. I won't say the name of it, but hot like hundred plus degrees. You're standing there hanging parts on a rack, taking parts off a rack, and I'm like, this can't be it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, this cannot. Getting paid bare minimal, no money really, and just sweating day in and day out. <laughs> wow, that's uh, that's amazing. So you get into this truck and you don't really like it. So I have to tell you before the podcast, you know, I went back and I looked at your application. So three pages of jobs, Montez. Yes, I yes. job hop. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so what's that all about? How did it go? Um, right? Never settling, always knowing that there was more out there. Okay. Like because I was just I was feeling my way out trying to feel what worked what didn't work where did I fit in at what did I like and um what I found out early on a lot of the trucking companies they like to not tell the whole truth when they're bringing you on board <laughs> yeah so where was the first trucking company you actually went to do you remember um oh, it was swift swift yes okay I was with them for approximately two weeks because I didn't get along with my trainer. And I called up my manager or driver recruiter. Hey, we're not getting along. Well, that's it. This is all you got. And this and that. And I'm under the mindset like, uh, well, I'm, if, if I'm not, if I can't fix it, if I can't reach out and have somebody fix it, then I'm going to change it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Can you imagine that happening today? Never in a million years would that happen today. No. Know? No. Wow. But they were just like, it is what it is, and that's it. Yeah. And I'm like, okay. And so I, two weeks later, then you quit. Yep. Did you have another job as soon as you quit? Um, I, I didn't have one lined up, but knowing my C, I had my CDL, I went over a prime. Okay. And um, really good program there, training program, everything. And I was in with them for a little bit, and they they, they really, they're they, as a company driver. Yes. Because usually they do owner operators, right? Yes, yes. Okay. All right. So you went to Prime, and drove for them, and were you driving over the road? Yes. All forty-eight states. Yep. I was everywhere. <laughs> okay. And, and um. Did you like that? Um, I did. It was like a love-hate relationship. Really? Okay. <laughs> because I didn't like being away in the beginning. I'm like, man, I don't know if I can do this. But in the back of my mind, I'm like, I got to do something different for my family. Because I'm not thinking about me. I'm thinking about my wife and my daughter at the time. Yeah. And I'm like, well, you got into this. Um, you got to see where it's going to take you, where it's going to end up at. And so I completed my training there. And then... Um, Heck, I think I went local after that. You want to know where you went? Sure. <laughs> it's so long ago. <laughs> so you went to a place called, uh, well, you went to CRST. Yes. And I forgot went, about that. Yes. And then FTI? Yes. I did local for them, crossing in and out of Canada for them. And, no kidding. Yeah. Yeah, chaining up a little bit? Um, not chaining up, luckily. Okay. But I'm um, just running out to Toronto and back. I was carrying um, engines for Ford over there. And okay. I was... Um, on a flatbed? Or no, drive van. Drive okay. van. And I was um, like an owner-operator over there, but they wasn't paying anything. Like So I, you were an owner-operator when you went to FTI? Yeah, like, well, lease operator. Okay. And... um. And I was in there, and I'm just looking and looking at my wife. I'm like, yeah, we're doing this, but it's just like it, literally one breakdown away from everything blowing up because I yeah. didn't have enough to put up, set aside, prepare. And it's one of those companies where we'll, give, we'll dangle a carrot in front of your face just so you can keep on going. <laughs> yeah. Were you? Uh, when did you become an owner operator? It must have been pretty quick. Um, yeah, I, I brought I was on brought on with them because I heard that's where the money was at. Once okay. again, not knowing nothing, I'm yeah. just hearing these things. Yeah, so hey, you're gonna go in head first. Let, let, right? let's, let's give it a shot. It was it was like, what do I gotta lose? <laughs> <laughs> Versus, 
after I get in a little bit, after I get in, get some experience. And that's where all of my questions started to come from me because it's like, hold on. This ain't adding up. You guys are saying this, but doing something completely different. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I think that I think that's one of the hardest things about being a truck driver is trying to figure out how you're going to get paid. Whether yes. you're a company driver, an owner operator, you're you know you're talking to that recruiter, and you know that that person on the other end of the phone, that's their job, right? Is to get you to sign on. Yep. Um, and so it's uh. You know, it was, uh, I have a side story. We had a, a driver that works for us and he got offered a position uh, with another trucking company and uh, they were offering him a different compensation package than we had. And I said, well, I said, let me take a look. And when I calculated out what he would get paid in this other job versus what he was getting paid today, it was practically the same. And it's just how it's packaged, mm. right? So um, I think that, uh, you know, you can make your package look a lot more attractive than it is. Yeah. Uh, and then when you get the reality of it, like you promise a higher rate per mile and you get there and there's no miles, right? Yep. <laughs> or, <laughs> or they tell you they'll pay you, you know, delay time, you know, but then, oh, there's a limit on the delay time or there's a hiring bonus. And well, you have to wait, you know, X number of months before the hiring bonus. You have to stay so many months and, yep. you know, it's just really difficult to figure it out. That's why a lot of times when I talk to people, it's more, you know, this is what you can take home, right? Because yeah. that's the bottom line, right? What and you take that home, is, right? and, and as truck drivers, we appreciate that versus le leaving there on Friday, we're scratching our head like, uh. <laughs> yeah, my check was only 20 cents. Where did it go? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you went through a bunch of different jobs and, uh, and in 2017, you reached out to us and, uh, and decided to come over to LGT. So can you talk me through how that happened? Um, it happened, um, the money. I was told, hey, there's good money. And on top of there being good money, they treat you well. And I'm like, what's good money? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, because everybody with good money is different because I've heard that spiel time and time over again. Yeah. And they're like, well, the, 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 and they're seeing some numbers and I'm like, OK, well, how, how do they treat you? Because getting paid good money and getting treated different is two totally different ways, things. And and I'm, I can say I'm still shocked and waiting for the other proverbial foot to drop. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's a good thing though, right? Yes. That's always a good thing. Yes, it is. Had you pulled tankers before? No, no tanker experience. So how was your first tanker ride? Um. Was it a shock? Did you feel the liquid? Oh, I felt the liquid a little bit, but because we have baffled tankers here, yeah. they're not unbaffled tankers. You really don't feel it that much, but you feel it a little bit, but it was, it was a learning curve because it's shorter than a normal van. And, um, Sometimes you have to take wider turns, but it it was just different. You, I can't necessarily put it in words like when when weather's bad, mm -hmm. you can maneuver better because the wind goes around the tank easier than the box. Wow, I learned something new today. <laughs> hmm, that's pretty cool. So you came over to LGT, and uh, I can't remember if Air Gas was the first place you went to work. No, it was Air products okay CO2 yep CO2 yep okay I worked with them for about two weeks but I knew I wanted to get it with air gas because I heard good stuff okay and and I let you knew that immediately and once something came up you moved me right over okay and so you've been hauling for air gas except for one short stint which is actually air gas anyways it was nitrous oxide but you've been hauling for them since that time yep and you've pretty much been you know close to home almost oh, yeah. right yeah yeah kind of that midwest corridor right where yep. you have from manuka right yeah i can't remember if you've ever gone all the way east did you um, go to basra i can't remember i didn't go to basra but i did over the pandemic call for um messer over on the east coast oh you did and okay. i was like get me from over here <laughs> yeah yeah you know some people love it right some people hate it they hate the congestion yeah. and the you know feeling yes. that boston feeling 
and no truck stops you really have to be plan your route yes <laughs> versus just when you're in the midwest you can throw a rock and hit a truck stop <laughs> <laughs> well i'm not so sure about that right because around chicago well yeah it can chicago. get pretty dicey right yeah chicago you, well you just have to plan accordingly once you run it you kind of know hey i'm gonna stop before i get to chicago or i'm gonna get through chicago and stop after but if you're in chicago good luck <laughs> yeah yeah it's tough so along this path of yours you have uh you've gotten married yep and her name is ashley yep you've been married for how long now it'll be 11 years in august yeah and you met her in high school yep yeah and you have how many kids now i have four kids yeah and their names We'll start with the oldest. Her okay. name's Kylie, Adriana, Jasmine, and my son is named after me, Montez. Yeah. So you hung out for that boy then? Yes. <laughs> I was holding out. <laughs> well, I personally talked to Ashley and she's done, I'm pretty yeah. sure. <laughs> <laughs> she is. But I'm like, look. <laughs> this... I'm going to have one more. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, come on. We, we, uh uh, this can't be. Yeah. <laughs> God, what did I do wrong? <laughs> yeah, and he is how old now? He's five. He's five. So he started kindergarten. Yep. Yeah. He is loving it. Really? Yes. That's awesome. And your oldest is now? 13. Okay, so you're starting the teenage years. Yep. So being away from home as a driver, your wife is working now at the school, but she wasn't working for quite some time, right? Right. Yeah, so that's how you guys manage things then. Um, yep, she she works at the school, teaches, um, well, substitute, and fills in wherever needed. And mm -hmm. it's kind of a good fit because she was a stay-at-home mom for the longest when my kids weren't in school. Right. And she was like, um, I'm getting bored. <laughs> what yeah. do I do? I'm like, yeah. well, uh, figure out if you can get a job at the kids' school. And... But it's got to be tough on her, right? Four it kids, is. right? It, it is. She, I, I'm going to give her credit. I don't always. <laughs> now listen, my lovely wife. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you, and I appreciate all your hard work that you do. And um, yeah, yeah, because she at, at times it, it can be tough. Me being away, and her dealing with everything encompasses encompasses the house and stuff. And, and yeah, but she she's doing a really good job. She is. Yeah. Do you have family close by? Does she? Um, we do, but we've been, we haven't been blessed with the greatest family, so it's just kind of us doing our own thing, trying to figure it out and yeah. fumble through it. But we we've gotten there. Good. Yeah. What do you think she would say? Uh. Yeah, I think she would be. I think she would agree with me. Yeah. Because it, it's, it's not easy, but it's doable and it works for us. Yeah. It's quite the lifestyle, actually, yes. right? You think about it as that you're away from home and something happens, you know? She's got to make sure that she's able to juggle all those yes. people, right? And uh, get them where they need to go or what needs to happen. Yes. Right? It, the blessing is that you're so close. Yeah. Right? That you can be there if you need to. And and that 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 is true. That is very true because like once again, like just coming over here in the beginning, I was skeptical. Well, is it what they will they say if they cuz I've been at companies where, oh yeah, we'll get you home. Um I'm supposed to be home on this date and it's 2 weeks later and you're still telling me you're going to get me home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We had a rough patch there though during COVID. Yeah. Yeah. But I wouldn't say it's to be expected, but that's like once in a lifetime thing yeah, everybody went right? through. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we we made it. And, yes. Uh, and as soon as things picked back up again, uh, we went right back to air gas. So. Yes. It was, uh, it was good. It it was a rough patch, but here at LGT, you guys really stood by us. You guys helped that rough patch not be as rough. Yeah. Sure felt rough. It, it, it did. It did. There were some times I'm like, yeah. I'm like, gonna, oh my God, yeah. is this ever going to end, right? Yep. 
Yeah. That's how it felt. But but just knowing that it had to come back to normal. Yeah. It had to. (laughs) So let's talk about Thanksgiving, right? You got a big holiday coming up. You got Thanksgiving and Christmas is around the corner. Yep. Right? Got four little ones at home with your wife. What, uh, I'm sure you're going to get home for Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Do you have big plans? Um, just what we normally do. Thanksgiving dinner, we'll cook. Um, uh, you say you like stuffing. We make, oh, stuffing. she makes homemade dressing. No kidding. It's along the lines of it, but it has love, if you will, cooked into it. <laughs> <laughs> But what's the secret love in there? Huh? Um, just making everything from scratch instead of just opening it from the box. Wow. Like everything. Like um, the croutons, the chicken, the chicken broth, mixing it up and getting the taste right. And yeah, we typically do everything from scratch as far as for Thanksgiving. Nothing out of the box. Wow. So what do you usually have for dinner? Like, and what time is dinner? Just checking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, four o'clock. Um, four o'clock. All right. Uh, we typically have dressing. That's my favorite. Um, we'll have ham, turkey, uh, chicken, um, green bean casserole, mashed potatoes, homemade mac and cheese. That's another one. Wow. Um, okay. Everything. Like in and the, are you a pumpkin pie? Um, no, sweet potato pie. Really? Homemade sweet potato pie. You know who makes the best? I'm going to put a little plug in here on this podcast for the best homemade sweet potato pie is Melvin Spencer. Melvin Spencer? Melvin Spencer brought me a piece of homemade sweet potato pie one year. Oh, <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but some people have never even heard of that. Man. Yeah. Try it if you haven't. <laughs> yeah. So do you have a big crowd? Um, no, it's just typically us, uh, my kids, my wife, my mom may come over, her mom may come over, but that's about it. Like, just keep it small, tight knit. And we're, we're kind of, we're, we don't mingle with a large group of people, tight knit, just cause, you know. But your brother-in-law lives with you, right? Yes. Yeah. He, he'll be there as well. I he'll forgot about that. Yeah. Don't forget he just, about him. He'll, yeah. I'm sorry, her. Steven. <laughs> 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 he, he's just there and 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 since since he's come over here he's just he's like shoot i gotta go make some money <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> well that's cool so anything else that you can think of do you guys watch football um we tip we don't watch football we'll get up and we'll watch the detroit parade okay um that's typically like a tradition we'll watch that and then um because santa he'll be at the end of it and stuff and the kids get all excited for that yeah (laughs) except my oldest she's like uh i know who santa claus really is (laughs) (laughs) shh don't say that too loud (laughs) (laughs) okay so my next question is about two topics that are happening in trucking today the first one is a driver's the driver shortage and we've touched on it a little bit but um, you know, some of the stats out there say that uh, there's a, a truck driver shortage for like 80,000 people. Um, but then I just recently read this one article that talked about uh, that it really wasn't a shortage. There were, and it, actually, this was kind of an interesting um, stat. They said uh, this was in, I think it's in California. It said they had 640,000 people holding a Class A CDL, uh, but they only had 140,000 truck driving jobs. So the article, the gist of the article was not that there's a driver shortage. It's just that nobody wants to be a truck driver anymore because of, you know, compensation, benefits, lifestyle. Yes. So what do you, what do you think now that you're, you know, 10 years into it or 15 years into it? Um, I think. Would you do it again? I think I would. Okay. N- knowing what I, if, if I can start over knowing what I know now, yes. <laughs> okay. But that's knowing what I know now versus having to stumble and uh, figure it out on my own to get to this point. But I don't necessarily believe there's a shortage. I think, like you said, there's a compensation issue. Don't nobody want to pay for our time when we're just sitting there on somebody else's time. Yeah. And and that's that's hard for a lot of people to 
to to swallow because uh, like the, think of it like everybody else they go to work for eight hours but let's say well you got to sit for two hours but still work and wait for me until I get ready to but we're not going to pay you <laughs> yeah I think personally if, that the hardest part is um, just the amount of hours that you work yes right I mean it's it's always interesting to me the conversations that I have about well, you know, we want them to max out their time, right? Max out their available hours. Well, when you really think about that, that's 70 hours. That's yes. not 40, right? <laughs> yep. That's 70. So you're asking this person who you won't let go spend the night at their own house, right? That's going to spend the night someplace else in yep. a truck stop possibly, maybe at a rest area, right? And uh, they're not going to be able to eat home cooked food and they're not going to be able to take their lunch with them. And then you want them to also work 70 hours, right? Yes. And put that in realistic terms, right? You're asking them to work 14 hours in a day. Yep. Not eight, <laughs> but 14, right? Yes. I mean, where else in the world are we going to say that's normal or that's acceptable, right? It's, it's, you have to be. A special individual to do that <laughs> yes I think you do right you know um, on the flip side right where else can you make this amount of money right that With is true out a college degree right that is very true and 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 you have to you have to weigh the cons the the pros and the cons because I've heard a stat that uh, a FedEx driver local delivery driver over his lifetime he'll make more money than somebody that who's practicing a doctor because of all the student loans. Oh, that's kind of interesting too, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, wow. <laughs> yeah, so when I look at that shortage, you know, I think to myself, it's, it's uh, I think that the industry as a whole is going to have to rethink how they, how they staff yes. trucking companies. And I think we're going to have to make some changes, like, you know, how many hours does somebody work during the day or... You know, and and you're going to have to you're going to have to compensate that person if they're going to be away from home. But how do you how do you structure the work so that the driver gets home on a regular basis? I mean, and, yep. being home every weekend is much better than being home every three weeks. Yes. Right. Yes, and there and there there's a thin line to walk with that because some drivers like it and some drivers don't, and and it's about finding the balance. And a lot of companies like. Uh, these, these bigger companies, they just don't have that balance. They're just looking for how much revenue can that truck push? Yeah. Revenue, revenue, revenue. Well, I'm, I'm tired. And I've been there with other companies. Well, I'm tired. I, I, I got to take a nap. Well, get go get a coffee. Walk around the truck. Well, well I, I'm tired. It's not safe for me to operate this when I'm tired. <laughs> yeah. And um, being here at LGT, I've never experienced that. Not one time. <laughs> well, good. I'm glad. We try hard. We don't always get it right, you know what I mean? But, but we work at it. Well, as long as we get it right more than we get it wrong. Yeah. And I can say LGT got it right a whole lot right, more right than 90% of the com <laughs> truck companies out there. <laughs> you know, while we're talking, I'm sitting here thinking about some of the conversations that we had. So I'm going to get off topic just a little bit. But one of the things you've always considered doing is adding your own trucks, right? Becoming kind of a fleet operator. And it's one of the things we've actually never really talked about. Are you still thinking about that? I am. I'm just, my biggest fear with that is putting somebody in a truck and I'm being responsible for it financially and they don't respect it. And that's my biggest fear. And that, that, that even at times, I don't have multiple trucks now, but even at times I lay awake thinking of that because it can get pricey if they don't operate it how it's supposed to be operated. <laughs> yeah. There's quite a few people that actually do that though. Not necessarily here. We've only had a couple of people that have done that, but I just was kind of curious. And, and, and along those lines, what are your plans for the future? Are you, where do you want to be 10 years from now? Right? Um, 10 years from now, I am hoping to have some rental properties which um, I purchased my first home being here at LGT. Yeah, um, that was awesome, by the way. Yes. Yeah, major milestone. Yeah, <laughs> uh, working on some rental properties. I'm uh, just trying to find the right time for that. But I think in ten years, I will still be here, 
um, bopping around, doing my thing. Might not be working as much, but I, I can. I don't see myself leaving here because it's consistent, and and it's hard to find good consistent people to work with. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I would agree. I love it here, but you know, I'm kind of biased. <laughs> <laughs> I am too. <laughs> so, with that being said. Um, I want to tell you, I really appreciate your being here today, Montez, and I appreciate your honesty and your candor. Um, oh, thank you for having me. Yeah, and uh, um, I've known you since you started. Um, I'm really uh, very grateful for you and the job that you do here at LGT. Um, you're an awesome driver. You service a customer to the hilt, and you're a hard worker, and, uh, and we're just very uh, blessed. To have you at LGT. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Yeah. And I appreciate you giving me the opportunity and that that's what I, that's how I look at this, not just a job, an opportunity of family. Because that that's how that's the culture you guys have here and and cultivated and and that's rare. Yeah. <laughs> well, I also rare. want to say your wife's a rock star and I give her a lot of credit. Yes. <laughs> Thanks everyone for listening. We hope everyone has a great Thanksgiving with family and friends. Also, thanks again to Montez for joining us today. If you like our show, be sure to download other episodes and leave us a review. For more information about myself or LGT Transport, follow us on social media or visit our website at www.lgttransport.com. Thanks again, everyone.